Hello students, welcome to biology class students. Students, one thing I would like to tell you about, success is not an accident. It's your hard work, it's your perseverance, it's your learning and it's your studying. And moreover, if you are talking about the success, you should, uh, you should love what you are doing. Right students? So we are on the chapter reproductive health and we are discussing some questions which are important as your need is concerned. So I'll give you some uh, 10 questions about the need and we'll, I'll explain you the answers as well. Right students? First of all, you should know what do you mean by reproductive health. A person should be reproductively healthy if it is reproductively healthy in the terms of, if the reproductive organs are healthy in the terms of their physical, in the physical characteristics, in the uh, uh, emotional characteristics and in the social characteristics. If a person is healthy, if a person is healthy in all those aspects, the person will be considered as a reproductive healthy, uh, reproductive, reproductive health. Right, and this was a definition which was given by the WHO, that is a World Health Organization students. Right, as the need is concerned, the first of all, the question which I will be taking the uh, uh, are the first question is hysterectomy is a surgical removal of a uterus, B prostate gland, C vas deferens, and D membrane glands. Right. So students, the question is asking that hysterectomy, hysterectomy, it's a surgical procedure. Normally, as a tomy is there, that means it's a surgical procedure, obviously. And we have to tell that hysterectomy is surgical removal of uterus, prostate gland, vasa differentia, or membrane gland, right? So to talk about in this, if we talk about the uterus, uh, let's come from the last. If we talk about the memory glands, when the memory glands are removed, that is called as memectomy. That is called as memectomy students, right? If we talk about the vasa difference, right, that uh, is a duct which is present in the male reproductive system. So when we remove this vasa difference, that is called as vasectomy, right? This is called as vasectomy. Right. When the prostate gland is removed, this is called as prosectomy. Right. Students, when you are preparing for the need, one thing you need to remember is that suppose you are doing some questions, right? And the question is having four options, right? In those four options, if you know that op option is particular, like suppose option is D, right? Then you should focus on the rest of the option as well. Because there are chances that among those rest of the option, there are chances that these may be asked in the future need uh, questions, right? So to talk about, so I have given you uh, this name that is a prostate gland removal is called as prosectomy and the removal of uh, vasa differentia is called as vasectomy and the memory gland removal is called as mammectomy, right? Similarly, when we remove uterus, this is called as hysterectomy, right? So the option is A. The correct option is option A, right students? So this was our question number one. Let's talk about the question number two. Now, let me first of all remove all this. <coughs> so, Question 2 says, which of the following is not a sexually transmitted disease, right? Sexually transmitted disease, I think we have studied. I, not I think, but we have studied in fact. Sexually transmitted diseases are those diseases which spreads from the one particular body to another with the help of sexual contact or with the transfer of the body fluids, right? So first we have a syphilis. Syphilis is a type of sexually transmitted disease. So let's revise all these things that what is a causative agent for syphilis? Causative agent for syphilis is treponema. Pelidum. Right, students? Hope you remember this as well. When we, were when we were discussing certain sexually transmitted disease, this was one of them. And I told you as well, at that particular time as well, I have told you that you need to remember the causative agent of this as well. Like that this was a triponema pallidum. So for the general point of view, I'm telling you that you need to remember all those things as well, right? 
Next, we have a very common disease. We all know that is AIDS, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, right? Acquired immunodeficiency syndrome is caused by one virus and that is called as HIV. Hope students, you know the full form of HIV. That is a human immunovirus. Right, students? Right. Next, we have trichomoniasis. Trichomoniasis is also a sexually transmitted uh, disease, students. If we know the trichomoniasis is spread by one uh, protozoa, that is trichomonas vaginalis. Trichomonas vaginalis. Right, students? And just because it's a scientific name, so I, I have underlined this. Next, we have one more disease that is encephalitis. Encephalitis is a neuro neurological disorder, right? It is not associated with a sexually transmitted disease or the, it doesn't spread with the help of body fluids, right? It can occur because of the certain other viruses as well. They are some uh, HPV. These are associated thing. Like this cannot occur by some particular virus, but these are associated. Like the person may develop this thing as well, right? So this is not a sexually transmitted disease. So answer will be D, sexually transmitted disease. Uh, this is not a sexually transmitted disease. That is a encephalitis, right students? So this was our question number two. And correct answer is D. Next. Next we have the question. Student, read this question. Till then, I rub all this. Right. So what we have now, the third question, students. Medical termination of pregnancy, MTP. Yeah, you should know the full form of MTP, that is a medical termination of pregnancy, is considered safe up to, up to how many weeks of pregnancy, right? So basically, the answer is 12, right? According to the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act, I think my students know about that, uh, know about this, Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act, which was, which came into existent, existence in 1971. This states that when we remove any, uh, uh, like uh, uh, the embryo from the body of the female, so up to 12 weeks, it is safer for the child as well as for the mother. But after the 12 weeks, it is not at all safe, right? Next option we have is 18 weeks. Next we have a six weeks. And uh, another we have is a eight weeks. So correct answer is the 12 weeks, right? <coughs> now the next question is related to AIDS as I can see that. And very common topic and very important as well as per the need is concerned. Right, so what we are discussing, at which stage of HIV infection does one usually show symptoms of AIDS? Right. So question says, suppose a person is having HIV infection, right? The question states that a person is having HIV infection. Now we have to know at one, what particular time the symptom of AIDS will be visible, right? So let's go into detail first of, first of all. AIDS, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, causative agent, HIV, right? Now you will ask or I'll tell you first of all, the AIDS, in the AIDS, the cells which are affected are T helper cells, right? T helper cells are affected and these T helper cells, they interact with the HIV virus with the help of one receptor which is called as CD4. I think you all know about this, that is CD4 cell, this is how they interact 
And what will happen, this HIV, the RNA genome, they have a two copies of single standard genome having the reverse transcriptase activity and protease activity. They will enter or they will, uh, what they do, they enter the whole genome, the whole RNA is entered into the cell or the T helper cell. It will replicate with the help of the host machinery and produce a numerous copy and destroy the T helper cell, which is a major part of the human immune system, right? So. One thing you need to remember that it, uh, the T helper cells are affected, right? So the option says when a viral DNA is produced by the reverse transcriptase. Is that so? No, not at all students. Why? When viral DNA is produced by the reverse transcriptase, normally whenever a RNA is inserted into the genome, RNA is inserted into the cell. Now what will happen? The first RNA is converted into the DNA with the help of enzyme that is called as reverse transcriptase, right? So whenever the first RNA uh, or first DNA is inserted, there will be loss of around one or two T helper cell. I don't think so. That will be so much uh, that that T helper cell, one or two helper, uh, T helper cell will not cause any kind of symptom. I don't think so that it will be there. Actually, it is not there in this, ca in this case. When HIV replicates rapidly in the helper T lymphocytes and damages large amount of these. Yes, this could be the reason that when HIV replicates and the, it will affect the T lymphocyte and damages large amount of this. Yeah, this could be the reason, but actually reason in this case with the 15 days of the sexual contact with the infected person, this is the reason. And one of the reason in this case could be this. These two are approximately correct, but more correct is this. When the HIV replicate rapidly in the helper T lymphocyte and damages a large number of these. Right, so the correct answer in this case will be B option. Right, why B option? Because T lymphocytes, the helper T lymphocytes are affected. Now what will happen? There will be no production of antibodies because they help in activation of the B lymphocytes that produces the antibodies. So the correct option is B, T lymphocytes are affected. The whole immune system, whole body immune system will be affected and this correct option we say is a B. Next we have the next question, so students, next question for today's class is, uh, yes, the techniques called gamut intrafallopian transfer is recommended for those females. Now, when we were discussing certain uh, assisted reproductive technologies, we were discussing about GIFT, that was a gamut intrafallopian transfer, right? As the name indicates, gamete intrafallopian transfer. This word is written over here, that is meant by gamete, right? In the gamete intrafallopian transfer, what exactly the case is, the gamete or the female gamete is incorporated into the female vagina or more precisely, I can say, into the fallopian tube, right? Now, uh, let's uh, see examples or the options. Who cannot produce an ovum, right? This could be the reason. Because those female who cannot produce the ovum, in that case, this gamete or the female gamete are inserted into the fallopian tube. Yes, this could be the reason, right. Next point is that who cannot retain the fetus inside the uterus? No, this could not be the reason. If they are inserting the gametes, that means the female can receive or female can produce the baby. That means a female can sustain the baby for the nine months. So this option is wrong. Next, whose cervical canal is too narrow to allow the passage of sperm? If this could be the reason, there will be no point in uh, transferring the gamut into the fallopian tube, right? So this cannot be the reason for that. Next, who cannot provide suitable environment for the fertilization, right? So this D part also says when fertilization cannot occur, then obviously there is no point in transferring the gamut. Because when gamete will be there, there will be fertilization because sperm will enter into the fallopian tube. When they will enter into the fallopian tube as fertilization occur in the fallopian tube. So it is saying that if there is no suitable environment for fertilization, then there is no point in inserting the gamete into the fallopian tube. So the correct answer for the question number fifth is A, right? Next is a question number six. So, question says, the permissible use of technique amniocentesis is for. Now, what do you mean by amniocentesis? 
amniocentesis student it is that procedure where amniotic fluid is taken out and that amniotic fluid is around 20 to 30 ml of that fluid is taken out when that fluid is taken out now what will happen that fluid will be having the sub of the fetal cell those fetal cell will be cultured those fetal cell will be stained and they will be uh, used for the karyotyping so that we can get to know whether the child is having some kind of genetic disorder we can get to know the sex of that particular fetus right so the permissible use of the technique for amniocentesis is for right detecting the sex of a unborn fetus yes this could be the reason but the question is saying permissible use right it is not actually meant for getting the sex of the fetus it is not for that so this could be the reason if we will not find any other reason so we will uh, like we will tick the option a right next is for artificial insemination how we keep it, how we can relate uh, the amniocentesis with the artificial insemination so students what do you mean by artificial insemination artificial insemination means insertion of the sperm into the human body or into the body of the female that is the artificial insemination and this could not be the case how can you relate the amniocentesis which is a procedure by which we can do uh, like get to know whether the child is having congenital disease or, or not so this is a wrong option right third we have is a transfer of embryo into the uterus of surrogate mother transfer of embryo into the uterus of surrogate mother student what do you mean by surrogate mother first of all tell me surrogate mother is that mother who is not the actual mother but will carry the baby for the nine months because actual mother is not able to carry that baby for those nine months because she is infertile right so surrogate mother transfer of embryo into the uterus surrogate mother how can this will be related to the amniocentesis right next we have is detecting any genetic abnormality yes very appropriate answer detecting any genetic abnormalities we can get to know whether the child is having certain kind of congenital disease or the metabolic disorders or not this is the actual use of amniocentesis right students so i have used i have incorporated this question only because students don't get confused or don't uh, judge in a very fast manner right must you must read all the four option then only take a correct one right this could be the reason right if this is not there this could be the reason but we have to write this because this is the more appropriate because the question is mentioning mentioning permissible use right students so the next question question number seven so test tube baby programs employs which of the following techniques test tube baby test tube baby means the baby is born inside the test tube right suppose i am a layman and i have to answer this question right then how will i answer this question this is it is written in the question that is a test tube baby means a baby which is formed in the test tube right a baby which is formed in the test tube means outside the human body in the laboratory right so a baby is born in the ivf this comes under a ivf category students is this visible to you this ivf that is in vitro fertilization fertilization outside the human body or in vitro condition inside the laboratory is called as a ivf technology right so we are producing some ivf baby that is a test tube baby where fertilization is occurring outside the body or in the test tube right so what after the fertilization what we do we implant the zygote into the women's body or into the uterus into the endometrium we are implanting the uh, zygote into the endometrium so that the child development can occur right so first we have is intracytoplasmic sperm injection no this could not be the reason because we have already fertilized the ovum right and then we are implanting that fertilized egg into the human body right so this could not be the reason intracytoplasmic sperm injection in the intracytoplasmic sperm injection uh, what exactly the case is if we talk about this in detail the sperm is injected into the cytoplasm of the egg right because those couple go for this particular procedure when they are unable to when the male is unable to produce the sperm or the sperm motility is lost by some uh, like the, the 
male is some disease and uh, the sperms are immotile, in those cases they go for such procedure that is an intracytoplasmic sperm injection. Next we have is intrauterine insemination. No, this could not be the reason because we are inseminating means we are inserting the sperm. There is no need to insert the sperm because we have already produced the whole, uh, we have already produced those things, na? Uh, we have already produced the baby in the test tube, right? So next is a gamete intrafallopian transfer. No, this could not be the reason because we have the gametes. That's why we have produced a test tube baby, right? Next we have a zygote intrafallopian transfer. Yes, this is the reason why the zygote is formed in the, uh, like test tube baby means zygote is formed outside the body and that zygote is transplanted into the human body, into the body of the female or more precisely I can say into the uterus. So zygote intrafallopian transfer that is called as a ZIFT, Z-I-F-T, zygote intrafallopian transfer is the right answer for this question students, right? <coughs> Next we have another question. Question number eight. So, uh, the question number eight says, ectopic pregnancies are referred to as, now students, you should know what do you mean by ectopic pregnancies. Ectopic pregnancy, normally pregnancy occur, fertilization normally occur in the fallopian tube and later on that fertilized egg, they come to the uterus where the implantation occur, that is in the endometrium, right? So ectopic pregnancies are those pregnancy where fertilization occur in the fallopian tube and the development also occur in the fallopian tube and such type of ectopic pregnancy are also called as tubal pregnancy. Tubal pregnancy means the fertilization are occur in the tube as well as the whole development is occurring in the tube that is a tubal pregnancy. Students, actually this is not safe and ultimately when the child is detected that it is a ectopic, it is, it is to be terminated because it is fatal for mother as well as for the developing baby, right? So the answer or that uh, option number A states that pregnancies with the genetic abnormalities. No, this could not be the case because we are not dealing here with the amniocentosis or chorionic villi sampling, right? Next we have is a implant, this is a wrong option. Next we have an implantation of the embryo at the site of other than uterus. Implantation of embryo at the site other than uterus. Yes, this could be the reason because implantation occurs in the uterus, right? I have told you about ectopic pregnancy is also called as a tubal pregnancy or the pregnancy where the implantation is occurring in the fallopian tube that is called as a tubal pregnancy. So it is not occurring in the uterus, it is occurring in uh, fallopian tube. So this could be the reason. So let's talk about this option C, implantation of the defective embryo in the uterus. No, this could not be the reason because we are not dealing any congenital disease over here. We are not dealing with uh, amniocentosis or chorionic villi sampling. So this is not the reason for that. Next is pregnancy is terminated due to the hormonal imbalance. Now this is very irre irrelevant. So the correct option we have is option B, right? Next we have another question. What is the figure given below showing in particular? So students, can you tell what exactly is this thing? This is the female reproductive system, right? These are the two ovaries, right? These are the fallopian tube where fertilization occur, right? This is a uterus and this is a female, whole female reproductive part, right? So with this picture, we get to know that this is a female reproductive part and we can see that somewhere there's some surgical procedure has taken place over here so that the knot is there. Can you see those knot over here? So that means it is that method of contraception where surgery is involved, right? So let's talk about the options first. First, we have a ovarian cancer. This could be the reason, no, this could not be the reason, ovarian cancer. How can you correlate ovarian can cancer with the surgical procedure? No, you cannot. Next we have is a uterine cancer. No, this is not a reason for that. Next we have is a tubectomy. Yes, this could be the reason because we are cutting the fallopian tube. This is a fallopian tube and we are cutting that and we have rejoined that and it is at that 
procedure of contraception. It is a surgical method of contraception where the egg or the ova which is produced over air will not be able to migrate to over the fallopian tube. So there will be no fertilization. The sperm which will be entering into the vagina from here, it will enter into the fallopian tube for fertilization because the passage is blocked. So there will be no fertilization. So answer is tubectomy. Next we have the D option that is a vasectomy. If you talk about the vasectomy in this this occurs in the male. Students, you need to remember, we are talking about tubectomy. Tubec means we are cutting the tube. What kind of tube? We are cutting the fallopian tube here, right? So these are the fallopian tube. On the both side, we cut these fallopian tubes and we tie those fallopian tube. So next is the vasectomy. Vasectomy is another procedure that a male follows. Vasectomy. Can you correlate vasectomy with vas difference? Yes, we can correlate that vasectomy is a cutting of the vasa differentia so that there will be no transfer of the sperm, so, so that there will be no uh, fertilization, right? So this was the question number nine, students. Next, we have another question that is a question number 10. Such type of questions are frequently asked like, we have to match all these things, right? So question says that given below four methods, A to D, and their mode of the action, one, two, three, four. In achieving contraception, select their correct matching from the four options that follows, right? In the method first, the pill is there, right? Now, we have already discussed in the method of contraception, we have discussed about the pills, and pills are actually a hormone constituent. They are they are having hormones. They can be uh, progesterone or they, they are combined with the estrogen also. We, are, we have already discussed about the combined pill as well. So we are discussing here the pill. So what will be the mode of action for pill? Is that the mode of action for the pill is prevent sperm from reaching the service? No, it's not the case because we have already studied that pill. Uh, is that pill prevents implantation? No, it, uh, like it doesn't help in implantation. It doesn't prevent the implantation even. The pill prevents ovulation. Yes, this could be the case. Yes, this is the case where pill prevent the ovulation, right? So basically pill has a progesterone and estrogen. Progesterone have a negative effect on the follicular stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone of the estrogen hormone and due to which there is no formation of the egg and that condition is called as N ovulation. That is called as N ovulation students. That means no ovulation occur because of the presence of hormones. So this is an ovulation case. Next, see, uh, next talk about the option B, which is a condom. This is a male uh, thing, male method of contraception, condom. So condom, uh, first option we have is a prevent sperm reaching the service. Yes, this could be the case because it is a barrier device which prevent the entry of the sperm into the vagina. So the correct option we got to know that is a prevent the sperm reaching the vagina or we can check the other option also that is a prevent ovulation, uh, sorry, prevent implantation, no. Semen contains no sperm, no. This could not be the reason. Next we have vasectomy. In the previous uh, question we have discussed what do you mean by vasectomy? Vasectomy is a cutting of the vas difference so that there will be no transport of the sperm or the semen which is having, they will not, the semen, semen which is excreted out will not be having the sperm, right? So, vas so vasectomy, it is written, so does it prevent implantation? No, not at all. Now what is another option which we are left with is the semen contains no sperm. Yes, this is the only reason that the semen doesn't contain the sperm. Next. We have the D of D that is a copper T. Copper T is the implanted or the intrauterine devices students. These are in, um, implanted into the vagina of the female, female vagina, they're implanted over there. And in this case, what happened, the continuous release of the copper ion due to which cytokines come at that particular place and that they will not prevent the entry of the sperm and in fact, they halt the implantation process. So this is the reason students, copper T, prevents the implantation, right? So let's match the following. Let's uh, correlate that what will be the correct option. That is A, B, C, D. A, 3, yes, prevents ovulation. B, first, yes. C, 4, and D, 2. We are lucky here. We got the option A, 
So students, this was the question number 10. Students, till now we have discussed the 10 questions. These 10 questions are just an example to give you an idea about how the neat questions will come, right? So you can revise all those things from the uh, module, from the written module of uh, our website. You can download that written module from our website also. Students, these are very important. Normally, two to three questions are asked from this part only. So students, very important is, uh, very, it is very important to revise all this because it is very important, right? Till then, meet in the next class. Till then, take care, students. Goodbye. Thank you so much.